Hey, hello everybody, welcome to the Santa Stream. Today we are taking a look at the most excellent Artoria i7. Been out for a long, 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 long time. Uh, it is a UV3, so no worries there. Absolutely cool beans. Um, this will be a full tutorial for the entire synth, not just this main part here, but the Mod Matrix voice programmer. Very cool, the 8 voice programmer. The effects and then the performance section too. Right, so we'll start with the main. Two VCOs, VCO1, VCO2. Um, this, I decided to do a tutorial on this because it, it behaves slightly differently than a few synths. Okay, so based on the old 70s stuff. Here we have a saw wave, which is coming from VCO1. We know it's a saw because this here in the filter, in the, in the voltage control filter section, for some weird reason, is the oscillator mixer. So you'll see here, it says saw, and we've only got one oscillator running. If the oscillator is in the middle, you produce no sound, and then you can go over to pulse or a square if you like and if you're on the square wave on vco1 so vco1 vco1 if you're on the square or the pulse you can uh do the pulse width here and in the middle it's a square also to note is the uh, uh, the way this works. So the, this envelope is basically hardwired to the, the volumes, like an ADSR without the R. So decay, uh, attack, of course, and sustain. Let's leave it around there for now. And you'll see here that this at the moment is set to LFO1. This is set to LFO1 and the filter is set to envelope two. Now this is envelope two. So you can assign your envelopes. So you've got envelope two here, envelope one here, LFO2 here. So for example, LFO1 is a super basic LFO. Now we do have another LFO, which is more complex. But this is just super basic. So if I drag the frequency over here, this is the uh, being controlled by LFO1. And all LFO1 is a sine wave. And this is the rate. And that's the depth. Okay, if we were to switch this onto envelope one, we're going to get pitch modulation now. Right, let's give it something to do. Let's take the stain off so it goes up and then down. So there you go, that's how you can get pitch modulation. Let's put that back into LFO1 for now. Take that mod off. Now, if we are in our pulse wave here, which we are, we can use LFO1 to modulate the pulse width. So this, so. And it won't be affected by this because it'll just take its point from where this is set. So in the center, it's kind of just moving backwards and forwards, depending on the depth, of course. Put that back to about there. Now you can also sync LFO1 and LFO2. 
um, to the BPM. So that would be also for the host BPM as well, if you were in AUM or Cubasis or what have you. Then we have frequency control. Let's put this back onto saw and listen to the filter. So and you can go all the way from low pass up to high pass. If we go all the way back down here and go to the very the very far left of this control. We're in, now we're in band pass. Let's go back into low pass. Let's listen to the resonance. All this at the moment is concerned with VCO1. Now we can also modulate the cutoff with LFO1 or envelope 2. So, for example, with envelope 2, let's give this something to do. Deeper the depth, of course. And then we can go uh, in negatives bipolar control, so we go negative. Uh, LFO1, we can modulate it with. And also, we can modulate the pitch as well with the same LFO. Or we can go into LFO2. Now, LFO2 is a much more complex low-frequency oscillator. So we've got a sign, um, a saw, or a ramp up, if you like, and a square. And we can also uh have a fade in and we can sync it to the bpm and have it re-triggers so put it on bpm sync let's give it loads of depth ramp up or sawtooth if you like Now, here's the thing, if I play a bunch of notes, and if I might hear it better on, um, if we have it lo a lot of depth, now you'll hear that the LFO is free running at the moment because re-trigger isn't on, so if I'm just, wherever I press a key, it's just, the LFO is just continuing, if I have re-trigger on, it's going to refire the LFO from its start point every time I press a key. Which is more musical for most things. Okay. So let's introduce now our second oscillator. So we have oscillator two now and it's exactly the same except the only difference is you can't choose envelope one 
as a, uh, a, a source of modulation, okay? Because on this VCO2, you choose envelope two as a source of modulation instead of envelope one. Okay, so let's put it into saw. And let's put the frequency up so you can hear it. And we can change that to a pulse or square. And then we could do some. And we could, of course, mix the volume of VCO1 down. So now we're just hearing VCO2. And that's really nice and high. So what we could do is bring in VCO3, which is this sub oscillator here. And we can start with a sign. Or we can have a triangle or saw, sorry. We can have it go either minus one octave or minus two. If I turn the volume down for VCO2, now you're just hearing the sub. And if we go into square, we can pulse with modulate that. But there's no way to um, modulate the pulse width on the sub oscillator from the front panel here. You need to go into the mod matrix, which is a uh, um, really handy. There's only a couple more things to show you on this main panel here, uh, which is the other way for VCO3 to be used is a noise. And we can, of course, modulate that with LFO2. Okay, let's just quickly reset this initial voice. Next thing on this page is the arpeggiator. Again, now I won't spend too long with this, but it will uh, have it on sync and switch it on. And you'll hear that now it's going up, down, up and down. Random, and this is your octave range, so up and down. And again, you can see it, have it synced to the BPM or you can just have it kind of. You can have it free running, it's entire loop through. Oh, you can also, you can also have it latched as well. So I'll switch that off in a moment. Um, let's see, Portmento is polyphonic. So if I switch this on. which is very cool for doing kind of um, that kind of vibe. And if we have it switched on, uh, we have this running a little bit quicker. It's like a, almost like a pitch modulation. If I turn, um, choose envelope one here, envelope one, for VCF, VCO1. We can have some really interesting stuff going on.
Okay. Now, of course, because we have two LFOs and can be assigned to different places, we could have, say, LFO2 playing with the... An LFO1 playing with the... Oh, let's see. And they'll run at different speeds. bit weird but there you go right okay so one more thing as well to note on um this let's just get back to it if we choose uh lfo2 here for this and i bring fading up we can play for a bit before the uh lfo takes effect on the pitch until i hold my finger down on a note and then it'll slowly fade in. Instead of doing it with a modulation wheel, right. Okay, let's do this. Let's set uh, this to LFO1. Let's just set back that to zero. And you notice we can also have LFO1 control VCO2 as well. This is handy because after we've had a quick listen to these, you, you need to switch overdrive on an effects, but we have a chorus. And a delay. Dry wet mix for both. However, we have deeper controls for all of these in the effects section. Let's just go to the mod matrix and I'll give you a quick uh, brief overview of this we have eight sources eight destinations which is really cool so for example if we choose a uh, source number one to be the mod wheel here and these are the different sources your lfo one two envelope one and two pitch bend velocity after touch of mod wheel so limited on your sources but it doesn't really matter let's choose mod wheel here and in the destination we scroll all the way to the bottom here. We have a vibrato LFO1. And this is how you get your mod wheel to do your vibrato. So if I'm just going to increase the amount. Go back to our main screen here and... Use our mod wheel. I'm using it on the key step up. If you leave it up full, you can control the speed with this. And of course, the depth. So I'm going to go back and speed it up a bit. Take it back off. Him. And we can bring in... Um, Well, you have a lot more control over things. So, for example, in this, we could go, well, what does the LFO1, we can actually send LFO1 to the submix noise there or the low frequency one, frequency modulation, amplitude modulation, VCA pan, LFO, vibrato to... LFO one is um we have um right sub P pulse width modulation for the sub oscillator which is oscillator three like, like I was saying before there's no way to modulate this pulse let's bring it in and let's just take these two down there is no way to modulate this pulse width control from the front panel. 
But now we can use, I think I did that, did I set it to LFO1? We can now use LFO1 here to modulate this. Now, all we need to do is give it a positive. negative amount and now we're modulating the pulse width control here for the sub oscillator of course it won't do out when you go anywhere away from a, a, a square wave so Okay, I'm going to reset that patch. So that's how basically you set up. You can, and, and like I said, you've got these mod wheel after such velocity pitch bend envelope one, two, LFO one and two as sources and as destinations. You have VCO one and two. Well, you can see you have quite a lot of destinations that you can use with your source uh, sources. So brilliant. Okay, so let's get back off that. Voice programmer. This is one of the best features in the ISEM. So I've got this, you know, a super basic kind of... It's our, our initial patch, right? So let's switch this on and watch what happens. As I play a note on the keyboard, just the same one, this just goes through this programmer. And if I play... So what this means is we have six different um, destinations that the eight voice programmer can control. But within those destinations, so, so six different sources, if you like, and within those sources, we have all the usual destinations. So the most obvious one you'll hear this on is where it's set on at the moment, which is VCF frequency. So if I watch this, look, look at our look at our VCF cutoff. OK. If I go in here and I start to turn this down, you'll see it's still the same. But listen, when I play, now where I have this set now, let's put the resonance up as well. No matter what I, it's it, it's note dependent. So this is quite extreme. We could go to V resonance now, and you'll see all this will reset. It's still there for that. So you've got all this different controls. So. This one is VCF mode. Course tuning. Now I'm just playing one note. Let's turn that one off. Let's mess around with this frequency one. Isn't it? So one of the fun ones is pan. So we'll put some headphones on. So every different one now will also pan. And you might hear this a little bit better. If we put on an arpeggiator and I'll put it on hold. Let's switch on our, in fact, let's, um, Let's put, let's put some delay on. So 
Now we're also using the Ella Envelope 2 but this is how you can get some really cool sounds. Let's show too. Look at the effects now. So we've got all this gear going on here and look at the effects. We have control over the delay. And the chorus. We haven't got that on. One of the cool things is the chorus can use a noise waveform. Overdrive. You won't hear that much with this chorus on. Awesome stuff. So, so I'm going to reset it again. So we've got a basic patch. And the last section I'm going to look at is performance. Now, performance, I don't know how often you'd use this, but you have access to the effects um, and the arpeggiator. But this is also another little cool feature. So, again, if we pay attention to the cutoff here, We go to our performance and I turn this cutoff frequency down from here. You'll see that we can, it reflects what's going on here now. So again, we can turn it right down and this will be right down. We can turn this right up and it'll be right up. So these are linked. some adjustments to my envelope you see it's moved over to the noise a little bit so all this stuff is linked to what's on the main panel so it's just quick access to four big controls that you can see that you can manipulate your sound with in real time so However, you're not limited to these four things. If we look like this, if we we can scroll through all the different options here. Um, for we've got like what was that one? Portmento? Did we see? Let's let's open up the actual list. Um, Portmento. So. I think we need to turn that actually on for this to work, so. There you go. There it is. There, it's a whole scene. Pretty. It's this. This part is easy. It just. It just 
is slightly differently laid out than many analog synths were so slightly different again with the envelope snap and the mix over here so first it, it's a little bit confusing but once you understand how this works then all this other stuff falls into place and it goes oh right it is really really powerful much much more powerful than the original hardware was of course and a much better price anyway guys thank you very much that was a look at the art a look in detail at the artoria ISM. In case you fancy dipping your hand in and uh, doing a bit of programming with it. Of course, once you've created a patch, all you need to do is hit save and you can choose a category, etc., etc., and carry on from there and save your patch. You do get actually several um, starting point templates here. If I was in template, you get a knit voice with noise with os two oscillators so choices of where to start but all pretty pretty straightforward stuff i i love this synth i love the sound of it you know but you can do some crazy stuff like i said by combining all these different the two lfos different LFO on each of the oscillators and then maybe an envelope on the VCF and then maybe going into the mod matrix and doing some more stuff. You can get some crazy stuff, but also some very, very really lovely pads and things like that. Anyway, top job. Cool beans. Thanks for watching. I will see you later. Ta-da.